Told you. Woo. Good morning. I'm hopeful today. We got great conditions. We're looking for halibut. I want to thank Mystery Tackle Box for sponsoring today's video. Uh, in the past, you've probably seen me troll. If you watch my videos, troll their Goon Squad Scout. Um, if you want to get this lure, you can get it on my website. Uh, but today I'm going to try trolling some uh, frozen herring. So uh, every year in the bay, uh, herring spawn inside the San Francisco Bay. If you can get on it, it's like a quick, like one to two day thing. So if you can get on it, you find out about it or you're, you just happen to stumble upon it on the right day, you can go up and scoop up a bunch of, bunch of herring uh, with a cast net. So I was lucky enough to get on one little herring spawn and uh, yeah, I cast net. We have quite a few, I probably got around maybe 100 herring in total. No, probably a little more, probably like 150. Uh, so I got plenty of bait for the remainder of the year. Um, I've already used a few, but today we're going to see if we can get a halibut with one. So uh, we'll start motoring out. Like I said, I got to get set up and then we'll start trolling. All right, guys. So here's the setup we're working with today. So this is uh, kind of your basic trolling halibut rig. Um, like a three-way swivel right here. Um, one side goes to about maybe a foot and a half. And I have a five ounce sinker on there. You can go a little heavier if you want to troll a little faster if you're fishing deeper water. But I'm going to start with that. And then the other side, maybe about four or five feet, uh, this 20 pound fluoro. I got this from the shopcarls.com website. So if you want to get some of this, it's on there. They got all kinds of different fluoro. They got the Guggen fluoro. They have some cigar fluoro. I think they have Yozuri. Whatever one you like. I don't think it really matters that much to be honest. And then I got a sliding Snell knot rig here at the end. Octopus hook on the top and a, and a, uh, a treble hook on the bottom. So what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to take my herring, start with the smaller one. Um, herring come in a wide variety of sizes, anywhere from like probably four inches to like eight inches maybe. Uh, this is a little bit smaller one, it's probably like four or five inches. Um, so what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put one hook through the nose, just like that. Second one in the back, the treble hook in the back. And then once I have it like that, I'm gonna give it the slightest bend. It's still pretty frozen, but uh, I should be able to get a little bend here. And the reason we like to bend it is that way when you're, when you're moving through the water, that bend will give it a, a roll. So I don't know, it kind of looks like if you look at it when it's rolling, it looks a little bit more like a fish is swimming, even though it's, it's not the same, but uh, better than if it was just going straight through the water like that. It gives, gives it a little more flash. Um, here in the bay, the water is super clear, so um, I think a little more flash helps for sure. So anyways, let's get it in the water, see how it's looking. So we're gonna drop this down, put it on the rod holder here. Wait for Mr. Halibut to come by and scoop it up. When you drop it down, um, we're, we're fishing where it's pretty much all sand, so you don't need to worry too much about snags. So what I like to do is drop it down so that it ticks every once in a while, it hits the bottom. Um, I don't like to drag it on the bottom, but if you can just get it to where it's like bouncing up and down, like it's not really bouncing right now. Now every every couple of uh, you know swells it'll bounce off the bottom. Oh, this bite, this bite. Check my bait. One thing about using frozen bait compared to the lure is every time you get a hit like that. Oh yeah, look at that. Have you guys had any luck yet? Definitely got bit. I think it was a small one though, just judging by the way it was bouncing and then the way that that bite looks. That looks like it's from a smaller fish. Pretty sure that's a halibut though. But you know what, I'm gonna drop this back down. Let's try it. I know it doesn't look great, but 
still got a roll to it. And it works for one fish, so see if we can get another bite. I'll try this for a little longer. Not too long. that hit he hit it and then he went running oh this is a good one this is a good one I'm get my gas break for this one yeah you can see those big head shakes like I don't know how to describe it but basically halibut it's like like all fish have head shakes but halibut is like it's like bouncing there's like a, a bounce to it I don't know I don't know how to describe it, but it's just different from other fish. Oh yeah. Still got, still got life in him, that's for sure. Oh, look at that. I don't want to play him. I got pretty light tackle here. Not like super light, but I always like to go a little bit lighter than most people. Yeah, oh, that's a good one. Holy smoke, that's a big fish. All right. It's definitely a gaffing fish. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, he saw the kayak and he didn't like that. He's going straight back down. Probably all the way to the bottom. Today I'm running with no fish finder, so I wish I could mark this spot and come back to it. But I'm just gonna have to make a visual, visual check. Kind of line myself up here with a couple of things. One thing if you don't have a GPS is you can kind of, I don't know, one, if you line, try to line yourself up with one thing on shore, that doesn't always work. Uh, but if you can kind of line up two things or even three would be better, the best, just to kind of triangulate yourself. I gotta focus here. We can talk in a second. I gotta, you know what? We, I think it is better if I'm moving a little bit. So I'm actually gonna start my motor ever so slightly. So that way when I'm, I'm moving, I can lay the fish out flat. Not like trolling, trolling speed, but this way, like it's not coming up straight like this. I wanna get it flat. It's a lot easier to gaff out flat like that. Actually, let's go a little bit faster. Is it going? Yeah, it's going. Okay. Whoa. Oh, he smoked that bait. He's got all, all my, my whole setup in there. All right, gotta wait for my moment here. Got him. Oh, that was a perfect gaff shot. No rust there. Yeah, you see that gaff shot? Right in the gut. When you get him right there, it like, I don't know, it like stuns him or something. I mean, it makes sense. If someone pierced me in the, my stomach, I probably wouldn't move very much, but anyways. Yeah, if you miss that spot, if you get him too far back or you get him in the head, they're liable to start going crazy. But for some reason, when you get him right in the stomach like that, it just kind of stunts him. So there you go. That's a good one. I'd say he's probably around 30 inches. Look at this. He's got the hole. You can't even see either hook. You know, I have two hooks on here, both of them deep in the throat. You see all his teeth right there? That's what you want to avoid. Do not stick your finger in there. When I take this off, that's when they might start to go crazy. So we might have an adventure once I get this off here. Boom, baby. Woo. Okay, there he goes. There he goes. 
There he goes. I knew that was coming. All right, all right, all right, all right. Easy, easy, easy. You know, it's right 8.30, so the high tide this morning is right at, I think it's 9 or 9.15, something like that. So this is right in that that bite window where you're in slack tide, where the tide's not moving too much. It's kind of arcing towards high tide. Um, and uh, when you're fishing in the bay especially, um, that's when people tend to target these halibut. There we go. Halibut number one for the day. I'd say he's probably around 30 inches here. We'll measure him. Definitely a keeper. Um, keeper size in California is 22. Actually, I'm pretty sure all of, I should do some research. Every time I say this, I'm not 100% sure if it's all California, but at least in the San Francisco Bay where I'm fishing, um, 22 inches is the minimum. So he's definitely over that. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, right at 30. Pretty good eye, huh? Solid fish. All right, we're gonna bonk him, bleed him, and get our line back in. Cause like I was saying, this is kind of the, I, I feel like the best time to be fishing. So um, we wanna get our lines back in while we can. I know I always say this, but you always, always, it's so important to check your, your leader after, especially a fish when it's hooked so deep like that, all that, those teeth are running up and down on your leader. So super important to check this. All right, we'll put a little bit bigger one on this time. See if we can go for an even bigger halibut. You know what, I just realized that was the bait that got bit and I just stuck it back on there. It's like kind of almost missing the tail, like almost all like coming off, but it still worked. Still had that flash and then it's still kind of frozen, but I like to bend it with my hand like that. So it's got the bend that I like and then tighten it down so that it'll, that bend will stay in place. Just kind of like that. And then, once they have that, my fish there are bleeding out. I'll stick it in the water and then start moving at whatever speed I want to do. I think I'm going to go right back to what I was doing. So that's what it's going to look like down the, when it gets down to the bottom. So, looks pretty good. Let's drop it down. There's a seal following you. <laughs> Do you have any, um, possibly have any uh, extra herring, like some small herring? Uh, I have anchovies, they're medium sized herring. <laughs> I can't see it too well because the sun, the sun's hitting it a little bit weird, but I just got hammered. Well, I got one, I uh, already got one, the last one on a half-eaten herring, so let's see if we can get another one on a half-eaten herring. Corner. Good fish? Yeah. Looks, it looks like a good one. It's heavy, man. I don't know, it looks bigger. Yeah, that's a good one. Take that up. Yeah. yeah baby. All right, guys. You want to know why you don't let let your balloons go? This is what happens to them. Not good. Not good. Happy birthday. It's not gonna be happy birthday for the environment. Oh, I just got a whiff of helium there. Take care of that.
It's always good to clean up the ocean a little bit when you're out here. Uh, it's, it's, it's a shame, but unfortunately the San Francisco Bay seems to have a lot of a lot of trash in it. So every time I'm out here, I'm usually picking up something. So um, if you ever come up on anything like that, it's good to pick it up, take it in, throw it away properly. So it doesn't pollute the uh, waterways more than they need to be. So just a little update. What time is it? 11.30 now. So it's been almost two hours since my, or oh, almost three hours my last fish. I had one other bite um, since then and then my buddy Ense picked up a fish. It might have been the same fish. I'm not sure. We're trolling in a pretty similar area. Um, but anyways, it's been a little slow and the tide is ripping right now. I mean, I'm, I'm moving at a good clip. I'm at three point or the same, you know, speed I was, I was trolling earlier. But when I'm going against the current now, I'm like barely moving just because it's pulling me so fast. So, um, Generally speaking, in the bay, that's not the best time to go fishing, for halibut at least. Uh, but that doesn't mean you can't catch them. So we're gonna keep keep uh, at it here. Eventually, probably around three o'clock-ish. Um, I gotta double check the tide, but around that time, the tide should start slowing down again, and then maybe we'll hit another you know, afternoon bite. So anyways, just kind of powering through the little, the tough session here. We'll see what we can make it happen later in the day. Yeah, yeah. Finally broke the ice there. It's been a little while since we got a fish, so this shaker is a welcome guest. All right, quick little look at that little shaker. Nice little halibut. It's probably about 20 inches or so, but a little bit too small for you. So we'll send him back. Hopefully, we'll see him again in a year or two. All right, watch how fast this one's gonna shoot off. Told you. Well, if you noticed on the, that fish doing something a little bit different. I wasn't actually trolling, I was just drifting. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna reset my drift, kind of go back upstream or whatever, up current, whatever you wanna call it, um, so I can drift back over that same spot and see if we can get another one. All right guys, so I wanted to give a little update here. It's about two o'clock now. It's been a little while since our last shaker. Uh, it seems like the fish, fish are kind of spread apart. Uh, which is pretty pretty uh, expected here, you know, early in the season. You wouldn't expect a huge school of fish to be in here, but there are some fish here, so poke around enough, you'll find a few, and it seems like there's a few good ones here mixed in. Um, got a nice one this morning, and then they got a nice one, um, as well as a few other keepers on the radio. Um, but anyways, we're looking around now. It's getting a little windy, as you can probably tell. Make things a little bit tough, but uh, we're grinding it out, see if we can find another fish or two in here. But um, I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on the kayak. Uh, I mentioned in a previous video that I updated you guys on the battery situation. Um, so there's two different kinds, really quick, I talked about a little bit before, but there's two different kinds of batteries you can get for this kayak. One is a lead acid battery, and the other is a lithium ion battery. Um, so the difference being the lead acid is cheaper, but you know, not as nice, and then the lithium ion is a little more luxurious, but it's a little more pricey. So. Um, in my opinion, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it, either one works, uh, either one works fine, but in my opinion, if I were to give some advice, if you're gonna go ahead and spend, you're, you're gonna probably spend around $5,000 for this kayak, this setup with all the accessories and everything. So if you're gonna spend that much for a kayak, I would spend a little bit extra money and go with the lithium ion battery for a couple of reasons. One is that battery is gonna last you longer than a lead acid battery, supposedly, uh, just the number of charges and recycles you can go through on a lithium ion battery. I can't say for sure, but that's just the research that I've done when it's in mind, is it's gonna last longer. 
The second reason is the actual charge itself for the same size battery lasts a little bit longer on a lithium ion battery. Um, and then the third and like biggest reason why I, I recommend it is just the weight difference. So a lead acid battery is gonna weigh twice as much as a lithium ion battery. So uh, not only are you carrying it around you know, all day out in the water, but you know, carrying it around back at home, loading in your car, putting it on the charger, all that stuff, uh, it, it takes a toll. I mean, the lead acid battery is like close to 60 pounds, if not more. Um, so having a little bit less weight definitely makes a difference. And then also what I would recommend if you are getting a lithium ion battery, is um, one thing that this kayak doesn't have unfortunately is a battery tracker for a uh, lithium ion battery um, so i recommend getting this little bluetooth charger leave a link in the description it's like a little 20 30 dollar charger it has bluetooth so you can hook it up to your phone um, you can set up alerts for whatever your battery getting low power on your battery um, and you can just monitor the you know the capacity of the battery in full day so i just checked it just now i'm at like 70 percent still so uh, nowhere near anything that I need to worry about, but um, it's just good to have, you know, not only to monitor it in case you do get low, but just as, like peace of mind, just getting out here knowing that your battery is working. Uh, although it's possible to paddle back, no problem, you know, you can do it. I'd prefer to have a battery to tow me back. So anyways, just thought I'd give you an update there. So I'll leave the, a link in the description to the uh, exact battery that I have. The nice thing about this one is it comes with a charger, so you don't have to worry about uh, getting one of those definitely. I just wanted to give you guys another special thank you for just supporting the channel, you know, and allowing me to to get in contact with Old Town and you know get a kayak like this. This would have never been possible without any of you guys. So um, I wish there was a way for me to like somehow give every every subscriber like a, a test run on the kayak, um, but obviously we can't do that. So so one idea that I had um, instead of doing that is uh, I wanted to get your guys' input and I was curious what you guys want to see with the kayak since you guys, you know, basically enabled me to get this kayak. I want to give back to you as much as I can. So let me know in the comment section what you guys want to see. Leave a comment of some ideas. I have some good ideas that I want to do, uh, but I want to hear what you guys want to do. So leave a comment down there. If you see someone else who commented a good idea and you want to see that, throw a like on that comment. So, you know, so it gets bumped up close to the top. And uh, maybe after a little while, I'll, I'll check back in the comments and maybe do a poll on Instagram or something with like the top five comments or whatever. So I'll leave a comment below. It could be crazy, it could be not. As long as it's not dangerous and like doesn't damage the kayak or whatever, uh, you know, as long as it's uh, practical, uh, I'll go ahead and try at least one of them. That's kind of like my thank you. You know, I can't thank you guys enough, but uh, just a small token of my appreciation for you guys supporting the channel and you know allowing me to you know, do stuff like this. Everything wet. All right, I think on that note, it's probably it's time to start heading back to the harbor. We'll see, maybe we'll pick one up on the way back, but uh, yeah, I think that means, I think that means it's time to start heading back. All right, guys, we, we stuck it out here long enough. I don't want to push it anymore. And see, now are gonna head in. Uh, we both like to push it, but uh, the ocean is no joke, even in the bay here. You can see the, the water splashing and the swells are a little bit big in here, so uh, we don't want to push it, especially with the wind and everything. Just not a good recipe. Fishing's not that great right now anyways. It's tough to fish when it's like this, so it's fun right now, but this could get really snotty real quick, so uh, yeah, it's never worth it to risk safety for chasing any kind of fish. It doesn't even matter if it's a trophy fish, whatever. Safety's always number one, so anyways, let's start. Ooh. We'll start heading back in, but uh, you know we are going to see how well this uh, kayak handles the big water. So far, so good. I know I didn't use, I didn't end up using the Scout today, but uh, if you want to, I know it works. You know, if you've been watching my channel, I caught a few. Actually, my first keeper, uh, of 2021. Holy smoke! Yeah, it's good we're heading in. Anyways, my first keeper, actually my first halibut as well. I know uh, of 2021. All actually all the halibut I caught up until. Day, uh, we're all on that lure so uh, it definitely works out here in the bay I'm sure it'll work out in the ocean too um, the one that I recommend if you want to get for halibut uh, in the bay I would recommend the silver flash uh, just because it has a little more flash and I think with this dirtier water in here I think it really makes a difference uh, but in addition to that 
if you want to join the Carl's Club, they have all this turtle tackle, fluorocarbon, swivels, monofilament, braided line, hooks, uh, weights, all that kind of stuff is all on their website. And if you join the Carl's Club, a lot of that stuff is actually discounted. It's a lot cheaper than most other websites. So uh, highly recommend it. It's where I get as much of my terminal tackle as I can these days. Um, I'll leave a link in the description to their website. But thank you again to Mystery Tackle Box and Catchco for sponsoring today's video. Um, I gotta focus on getting in. I don't wanna flip out here. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next one.